Hi, I'm Rev Myron. I'm a minister through Pathways of Light, and I've been a Course in Miracles student for over 40 years. I'm going through the text again this year, asking Jesus for clarity, and then I write from that clarity, and that's what I'm sharing with you today. So let's get started. We're reading from A Course in Miracles, chapter 13, section 8, From Perception to Knowledge. Paragraphs 6 and 7. In paragraph 6, they are all the same, all beautiful and equal in their holiness, and he will offer them unto his Father as they off were offered unto him. <clears throat> there is one miracle as there is one reality, and every miracle you do contains them all as every aspect of reality you see blends quietly into the one reality of God. The only miracle that ever was is God's most holy son, created in the one reality that is his father. Christ's vision is his gift to you. His being is his father's gift to him. They're all the same, all beautiful and equal in their holiness. Well, that's us. We are creation, all aspects of a whole, all equal, all the same, all holy. <clears throat> and he will offer them unto his father as they were offered unto him. That is, our awakening is the Holy Spirit's function given him by God. In fulfilling his function, the Holy Spirit gives us back to God awakened. And God is the one reality. There is nothing else. There is one miracle as there is one reality. And every miracle you do contains them all as every aspect of reality. You see blends quietly into the one reality of God. So we are studying a course of miracles. We are miracles. And we are learning to perform miracles and to offer these expressions of love. These are all ways that Jesus refers to this aspect of our function here. So here's what he seems to be telling us in this paragraph. Every miracle we do contains all miracles. This reference brings to mind a hologram. Here's what I read about holograms. The word hologram comes from the Greek word hollows, which is whole, and grandma, message. If a hologram is cut into pieces, each piece projects the entire image. Could it be that we are all whole and each aspect of us, the cells we cut into pieces, contains the whole? So each one of us contains the whole. <clears throat> Jesus is telling us that miracles are like that. Each miracle, regardless of the form it takes, contains the whole, contains all miracles, Maybe that is what he is saying in the first principle of miracles. There is no order of difficulty in miracles. One is not harder or bigger than another. They're all the same. All expressions of love are maximal. In this part of the sentence, as every aspect of reality you see blends quietly into the one reality of God. I think this is saying that the miracle exposes an aspect of reality, some aspect of love. And these aspects are part of God as well. The only miracle that ever was is God's most holy son created in the one reality that is his father. So the son of God, of which we are an aspect, is the one miracle. Again, I reference the hologram. An apple is photographed in a certain way, allowing a holographic image to be seen. <clears throat> when this happens, you have the original image of an apple and a small image taken from the original. The small image contains everything the original contains. The Son of God is the miracle, and all the other miracles we perform are the original miracle in every way. Only form makes them appear as if they're different. And the miracle that is the most holy son was created in God. So there is still only God. The Holy Spirit is a thought of correction. And what is a thought in the mind of God is creation. 
So the Holy Spirit, like the Son, is also in God. Therefore, there is still only God. His being is his Father's gift to him, and the Holy Spirit's gift to us is Christ's vision. Christ's vision allows us to see only the truth without the errors of the ego distorting it. It is with Christ's vision that we can see, that is, know the beautiful, brilliant light that is our brother, despite the character he seems to be playing. This is my present best understanding of this paragraph. So paragraph seven, be you content with healing for Christ's gift you can bestow and your father's gift you cannot lose. Offer Christ's gift to everyone and everywhere for miracles offered the Son of God through the Holy Spirit attune you to reality. The Holy Spirit knows your part in the redemption and who are, <clears throat> and who are seeking you and where to find them. Knowledge is far beyond your individual concern. You who are part of it and all of it need only realize that it is of the Father, not of you. Your role in the redemption leads you to it by reestablishing its oneness in your mind. <clears throat> so God's gift to me is Christ's vision, and I can bestow that gift on everyone and everywhere. This is what I'm to do. I accept the atonement for myself, and then I see with Christ's vision. That is, I know the truth despite the image. In doing so, I offer miracles to those who seek them. To whom do I offer the miracle? That's not my concern. The Holy Spirit knows my part and who I am seeking. I just follow his lead. And who's seeking me? <laughs> Ask him very specifically, what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say and to whom? Asking this is a way we agree to our part in the atonement. It is our commitment to be a miracle worker. This is my commitment. Thus, I realize that whoever is in my life today is there for me to share this holy instant. It may not be immediately evident to me and often isn't, but sometimes I'm looking for change in my purse to pay the clerk. And when I look up, I smile at her and her face lights up for just a moment. <clears throat> the love that I am has connected with the love that she is. Maybe she doesn't understand what just happens and I likely don't understand the extent of what has happened. But it happened because I did my part. At that moment, I used the gift of Christ's vision, and both of our minds were lightened. What happens next is not my concern. Sometimes it's a word or two or a teaching. Sometimes it's just my presence at the right moment. Other times, it is the example I set, as I react with love rather than defense. I have no way to know what is helpful in the moment or who it is that is ready for the miracle. And believe me, love in any form is the miracle, the part that matters. <clears throat> From uh, paragraph, uh, chapter one, paragraph one, sorry, section one, paragraph three, miracles are naturally as occur, sorry, miracles occur naturally as expressions of love. The real miracle is the love that inspires him. In this sense, everything that comes from love is a miracle. I spent a long time learning what love is and learning to release everything that is not love. In so doing, I have allowed purification. So it's easier now for me to do my part. Miracles are my right and they are my responsibility. And this is true of all of us. What I've also learned is that it is a responsibility that I carry lightly. I need only stand ready to express love and where and how will be decided by the Holy Spirit and communicate it to me in some way. The only thing that blocks this is the ego thoughts I have not released. So I remain vigilant for those thoughts and ready to release them. Thank you so much for joining me here. I appreciate that you did. If this was helpful to you, then please like it. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. And I'll be back soon with another reading. See you then.